What's up, guys? Hope you're all well. Phil from Courtsider here. Uh, another video, another fantastic interview, uh, this time with Marina Fernandez from the Newcastle Eagles. Uh, we talk all sorts. We talk about her journey uh, in basketball, why basketball is important to her, uh, a journey coaching the under-16s uh, in the Newcastle Eagles Academy. And, of course, we talk a little bit about some basketball kicks as well. Um, now, you may have noticed that something's changed around this area I have been called Super Mario. I have been called Homeless Mario. Uh, so just, you know, it is what it is. It's November, although this wasn't done because of that, but that's what I'm blaming it on now. Um, so, yeah, so I uh, hope you're all well and uh, enjoy the video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a like just to let us know that you like these kind of videos, these kind of interviews with BBL and WBBL players. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it why basketball like what is it about the game that gets you up in the morning mm -hmm. that's that's a deep question isn't it because it isn't it isn't just one thing but I think uh for me I've always been a team oriented um person both of my parents um were runners back in the day so um I've always been surrounded about athletes and you've always heard stories about kids following their parents um paths with like the same sport and stuff but ever since I was little I always gravitated more towards like um team sports especially with a ball involved um so I I did many sports when I was younger and then I changed to handball and I loved handball if I if I wasn't playing basketball right now I would be I would definitely be playing handball yeah. uh, but it didn't work out because the team fell apart when we were like 10, 11, didn't have enough girls. And then my mom was like, do you want to try basketball? People keep telling you to play basketball because you're tall, but you've never really given her, given it a go. And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, sure. Um, and I just stuck with it. Um, I think it's just so dynamic. Um, every game is different. Mm -hmm. It's a game based on momentum and energy. And there will never be two games that are the same not even close. And there are so many factors to have in mind when you approach a game that it's always interesting in different ways. So, yeah. I think that's one of the things that, that I've very quickly discovered on this journey with Courtsider is, is that the more game, I mean, I've probably watched more games um, in the last two or three months than I've watched in the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I can't get enough of it. And the one thing that you say there that really resonates with me is that each game is different. Like mm -hmm. people have this idea that basketball is a case of you've got a ball, you hide it in the net. It, that's not the case at all. Yeah. Like when you actually watch the plays, each possession, um, you know, and, and the amount, I mean, I don't know how many, um, you know, your coaches got, but like uh, there's players, there's coaches, sorry, that have got like 20, 30, 40, 50 different plays that yeah. the team, has to learn and obviously the, the whoever's running the point has to, to to communicate that. Um and it's just one of those things where like I've never watched a game that's been the same. Even no, no, no. Like, in, in football, like in my sort of upbringing is around football in that if, if a team starts to run away with it, they generally do run away with it. Where in basketball, like you can have a team that's like 20 points up by the end of the first half. And then they lose. It, yeah. It, it, there's so many different things that make games like so unique and so different. Um, how I mean that said, how do you how, that must take some mental strength to have to focus on each possession rather than just winning the game, like most people think. Like, how do you manage to kind of stay as laser focused and as is mindful uh when you're playing as you do yeah i think it, it's a tough one because i think it comes with experience um definitely when you when you see young players it is um very easy to just see that they lose focus or mm -hmm. they get stuck with like the previous position yeah. and that i think that's happened to all of us at some point it's so easy to get caught up with what happened three possessions ago, five possessions ago. And I coach my kids, my under 16 girls, and it happens all the time. And I look at them and I'm go and I think, oh yeah, well, like I've I've been there. So I think it's just trying to stay present and you just need to think next play. 
And maybe it was a horrendous possession, but even like the energy that we're talking about, if you get stuck with that bad possession and you keep thinking, oh, that was bad, that was a bad pass, bad turnover, whatever it is, it will definitely affect your next play. Yeah. Or even if it's just the other way, you get a really good offensive possession and you score, awesome. Don't get complacent because if you don't run back, you get scored on. So yeah. it goes both ways where you just need to celebrate it or take something away from it, but not in a way that will impact the next possession. You just need to move yeah. on, next play, keep going. Uh, otherwise, that's when like teams come back or you just like go on a really bad run, whatever it is. But it's just so stop and go, stop and go. And it just swings quickly. Yeah. There was something that I, um, I was watching the uh, London Lions game, the Euro Cup game last night. And there was a moment where the team as a Villanueva, I think they were playing. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. they, they were kind of like four or five points ahead. And the Lions scored a three pointer. And the opposition immediately called a timeout. I'm mm-hmm. assuming to kind of disrupt the sort of like, okay, they're coming back now. Let's let's regroup and whatnot. As a player who, if you were on the Lions team and you've just scored and you, there's, the momentum's with you, uh, and then the opposition call a timeout, like, how do you in that moment, like, what kind of conversations do coaches have with you? Do the kind of tell you to regroup and then refresh everything or do they kind of try and maintain that momentum mentally? Yeah, it's just about maintaining that momentum. Obviously, it's a tactical um, timeout to to stop the run, and, spe- and especially with yesterday's game. Uh, I think that London went on a 9-0 run, so yeah. they, were, they were going. And as a coach, you see it and you have to call a timeout to stop that momentum from going. So when things are going your way and you go into a timeout, you definitely have to come out expecting the other team to to throw a punch because they're trying to stop you. So you can't expect the place to come easy and just score a wide open layup. They're probably going to, to try to be more physical with you or trying to double team you, especially if you're on fire, like Holly Winterburn was, was cooking. She was like having really good plays. So you have to expect the other team to, to come at you to create some adversity. So it's just definitely staying focused and, and not stay complacent. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned uh, there, obviously, the, the your perspective from a coaching point, and obviously you've, you've uh, mentioned that you're coaching the, uh, is it only 16 girls? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that something that you're kind of, kind of got one eye on when you stop playing, that coaching is something that you want to pursue as a career? I don't know yet. I think it's it's my first time being a head coach with with young kids, well, in general. Um, so um, it's definitely a challenge and a di- and a different experience just to see things from the sideline, uh, being able to relate to them in some ways. Because um, if you've played basketball for a long time, you've been in their shoes at some point, yeah. uh, and I'm definitely enjoying it. Um, I can see why people say it's easier to play than it is to coach because sometimes <laughs> you have no control. Um, what happens on the court with with kids and obviously they're still learning so much that you can't expect them to just pick up things right away it requires uh, a lot of patience and time and repetition um so maybe it, it's a maybe I'm definitely enjoying it but uh at the moment I'm still focused on 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 playing and maybe in the future when when that time comes maybe I'll just think about focusing on that coaching uh yeah. career but for now I'm just enjoying playing and then I'm just getting started with something new and I'm enjoying it so far. So, so that's what matters. Good. Um, in, in that experience of coaching, has it changed the way you relate to your coach in terms of you've seen what's like for her on, on, on her, on her side of things? Does it, do you give her less sort of, uh, Attitude, not if you, I don't know if you're that kind of player, <laughs> but like, do, do attitude as have... well. Ask her, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, has it has it changed the way you are as a player? I haven't seen what kind of things you go through as a coach. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, especially with me being also a captain, um, I think I have more of an urgency to to execute what coach is trying to tell us to do. So, um, like I said, sometimes when you're on the sideline, you just have no control over what the team is doing on the court. You could say A, and your team could go out there and do B. 
and you're on the sideline and you just go, great. Yeah. And then you waste a timeout and you say, hey, guys, we're going to do this, do this, do this. And they all nod and then they go out there and they do the complete opposite. Yeah. So I think um, for me um, as a captain and me trying to be a leader, I, I try to make sure that whatever is said on the bench, on the sideline is executed to the best of our ability. And it doesn't always happen. Uh, it requires five people on the court to be on the same page. But even if it's just giving the reminder to to teammates or coming to a huddle and say, guys, coach said this, remember to do X, Y, and Z, whatever it is. Um, I think I'm more mindful of like, well, she said it. She's only got so much control over it. But if I can be a reminder and a second voice on the court, then I'll try to do that. But sometimes it's me messing up. So it's a tough one, but I, but I try my best. When you... Uh... When you talk about the, the sort of running plays, and this has always fascinated me, like each coach, to my understanding, and tell us if I'm wrong, but each coach has their own um, like naming system for, the, for each play. Like if, you, if you've seen Coach Carter, I named them after his ex-girlfriends and stuff like that. Like what's the weirdest, because you've played for a few different coaches, what's the weirdest sort of naming conventions that a coach has had for plays? Ah, weirdest. To to be fair, my coaches have been pretty straightforward with yeah. with um with plays. Um probably my coach, Noelia. Uh sometimes the, the names that <laughs> she gives to to certain concepts for her have to have an association with with something to yeah. remember. Um like colors and the color has an association with something that then it would make you remember what we're doing on the court. But I personally don't really, it's, it's taken me a bit to actually remember the colors because you think about basketball and people say defensively, you would go, okay, switch or stay or hedge trap. Yeah. So I've always operated like that in every single team that I've had. And now we actually have words for different ones okay so my mouth goes switch and i'm like oh no it's not switch i have to use the content that we all we're trying to all get on the same page with the vocab that we use but sometimes it's tough because everyone comes from a different background different teams different coaching yeah. so the player always has to adjust to to the new vocab because the coach might use something different that means the same yeah, but now yeah. we're in this team, this program. So what you did in the, in the past doesn't matter anymore. Now yeah. we need to all be on the same page when we talk. So it makes sense in a huddle or a timeout. And we don't all go, wait, what? <laughs> so so definitely, I think Noelia has an interesting approach sometimes with the name of some calls. But I wouldn't say anything is just like extremely weird. <laughs> what? So when you've been coaching with the, the under 16 girls, have you just kind of taken on what Noelle has been using in colours or have you got your own style? So um I haven't taken what I what we do with with the colours, but um with my kids, if it's a box set, we keep it simple to box. Box one, box two, like box one for baseline, box two for sideline. Uh I sometimes I let them decide if they want um, a certain name for one. One of them is called Wave, and they go like this. They think they're like <laughs> I don't know. You know, they're 14, 15, and they and they love it. Um, yeah. so um, just trying to keep it simple, a name that they will remember. Yeah. Hopefully, all of them are on the same page, and we go with it. Whatever that is, I don't really care yeah. as long as we know what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. and I, but I guess from a from a team standpoint, I think if they've come up with it themselves, like, yeah, no, this might be funny, but actually it's stuff like that, that sticks. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I guess the whole point is that the opposition haven't got a clue. When somebody just does this, it's like, what are you doing? Like, But to the team, to the, the, the individuals involved, that means something and it sticks rather than you trying to impose your will on them. If they come yeah. up with this themselves... Then... Exactly. And it started because it's like a handoff action. So they go from side to side, one handoff here, one handoff there. So it's kind of like a wave. So I yeah. said, how about wave? Because they came up with some random names. And I was like, <laughs> okay, enough. I'll put my foot down there. Yeah, yeah. But then um, 
I said wave and they're like oh yeah wave and I was just like oh they took it there well yeah, it's fine if it works if, if it works it works um there was one with the kids that we were working on trapping um on doubling the the post the low post so if you're in help then you trapped you double so we call it trap but then trap is quite obvious if you hear trap you know it's coming yeah, yeah, yeah. so they were like oh what well, can we call it so they started with some absurd name. <laughs> so we ended up calling it mouse because of a trap. I can see where they're going. So it, it was a it was a bit interesting to be playing defense and then you're guarding the post oh. and then you go mouse. So the person from the other side comes in traps. <laughs> but it stuck with them because they think mouse, trap, cool. And I'm like, all right, I laugh. I definitely laugh. It's it's an interesting approach, but Hey, you do what you got to do to get it done. If it works, it works. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. How have you found that experience of coaching the girls? Because I know obviously you're very vocal uh, and very involved in the, um, like, obviously the, the pre-game clinics. You've done the um, Her World, Her Rules clinics. Um, how important is it for you? I know it, obviously it is for Chloe, but how important is it for you to be a presence, to be a voice, to be... Uh, seen and heard in that conversation of young young girls coming into the sport um, and and getting involved with the, what the Eagles are doing. It's huge. I mean, it's a it's a great opportunity for me, and I think with me being a part of the WBBL team, it's it's also massive for them because some of them have been playing basketball for for years, and some of them are quite new to the game. But for them, they know I'm a part of the WBBL team. And obviously, we all know that basketball is not massive in the UK just yet. Yeah. Um, so for them, it, it's a big deal. Um, and I think, and I, I would say that they they look up to me in a way. They come to our games. They have these, like, flags. Um, they come in ready to, like, cheer on us. Yeah. Um, and, and that's great. And I always appreciate it. But it also means a lot because that means that you have young girls yeah. up there watching. Um, so sometimes when when games get tough or things are not going your way or you go out there, it's definitely a why. Um, because you know that you have you have kids out there who who come to watch you play. And especially my players, they know Chloe, yeah. but they deal with me every week. And they deal with me telling them to do this and do that. So, like, they're obviously watching to see it live. Because yeah, if yeah. I'm telling you to do this, then you go, well, like, I expect you to do that during a game because you tell us that that's the right yeah, thing yeah. to do. So so it's definitely trying to lead by example as well and trying to to do it the right way. Obviously, it's not always perfect and stuff. But I, I always tell them if there's one thing you can bring, that's effort and energy. So... Every time, every time I hit the floor, I'm always like trying to to bring the energy, trying to to bring the effort, trying to be electric in a way, rile people up, and being vocal and stuff. So, obviously, X's and O's. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes shots go in. Sometimes they don't. Mm. But the basics, what I try to um, tell them and what they need to bring as non-negotiables, that's something that I definitely try to bring every day. Yeah, and I think again, you know. I've read books and 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 uh, blogs and stuff, and, it, and the one recurring theme in most sports is, you know, talent will vary between people and, and athletes. But the one thing that you are in control of absolutely is the amount of energy and enthusiasm uh, that you bring to the game. Um, do you find that a lot of these girls are seeing you on a like through the week? with these clinics and these courses and then seeing you on a, a Friday or a Saturday playing the game and you're being that role model that's kind of going to guide them into basketball or are you just happy sort of the fact that you're having a positive influence on them regardless? I think I'm just happy to have a positive influence on them, to be honest. Uh, they all have different whys and they probably got into basketball for different reasons. Yeah. Um, but obviously for this season, it's my first year. And if we keep the culture growing for, for the Eagles Academy and then also in Newcastle in the Northeast, um, I'm more than happy with just having a positive effect on on, on the girls. And, and I think that's enough to to just leave a footprint. Yeah. Um, 
and I think we're 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 going now. We're starting to like get more girls, and like you said, we're having clinics. We're we're reaching out to schools. We're we're doing things to promote basketball and reaching out to girls to let them know that there are good things happening, and yeah. we're not even close to where we want to be. Yeah. But it is important for them to know because there are so many girls out there who want to play basketball, but they just don't even think they can because they don't think there's anything available for them. So uh, we're definitely promoting it and we're we're just getting started. But hopefully we just keep that momentum going. And hopefully in a few years time, we actually have a solid culture up here. Yeah, it, it, it's important that you, you mentioned that word culture and sort of growing the game in the Northeast. What do you think, besides obviously the outreach stuff that you're doing with schools and, and, and getting the girls in to the clinics and the camps and stuff, what else do you think that needs to happen to grow the women's game in the Northeast? Like, what, what do you, because I've been to a few and they're not as well attended as the um as the men's games. Mm-hmm. But there's very little, for me, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's very little difference between the way they play. I know there's a whole wider conversation about the differences between men and women. But one of the things that are misconceptions that I feel is out there is that the women's game isn't as physical and it's not as entertaining. That's absolutely not the case. Like I broke, <laughs> it gets I broke, so physical. I broke Jasmine to one last season. I think it was against Essex and we came away and she was like, I didn't realize girls were so tough. Like, obviously, she'd been to the camp, she'd been to the Her World, Her Rules, and then she saw you and Chloe, like, bashing into these girls and shouting and screaming and ah, <laughs> all this stuff. And it, it does, it, it like, it, it just, it motivates, and it was, it's great for her. Like, But in, in your personal opinion, what do you think else needs to happen to get us to the stage where the women's games are as popular as the men's games? Well, I think there are many things to be done, but like you said, you said clinics, the community outreach needs to happen. And and I think it starts with many girls just having a positive experience with sports. And obviously PE in school has a yeah. massive role, but if we can come into schools or we can attract uh, girls and obviously boys as well, but right now we're talking about about girls yeah. and, and have them just in an environment where where they have a positive experience learning the game, um, le- uh, learning about the game and then um, creating like good relationships and friendships uh, with people who like it as well. That's what gets them to come back. Yeah. And and then even like at games, when we get like little girls to come, if as players after the game, we we go out there and we take a picture with them or we sign their t-shirt, their phone, like finger, whatever it is. And they see that we are approachable and that we're yeah, human. Yeah. And yeah. that we can actually have a chat with one of the little girls and ask about like their week or if they've played basketball before. I think that's when you create that sort of like relatable yeah. relationship with where the girl goes, oh, well, like I spoke to Marina and like, I can approach her and and she's just human like she's just another person obviously she plays basketball but sometimes I feel like girls might see athletes as oh like they're just not like us well like you can be that yeah and and we're just normal people who play basketball um so I think that for them to see us as just like regular people um and we can just have a chat and relate to them because they're young and we've been there and then they can relate to us. That's what can get them to have that mindset of like, well, I want to be that when I'm older. Like not right now when I'm eight years old, but I want to work towards that, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that sometimes for us is after games, whether we win or lose is always going to the crowd and taking pictures and signing autographs because we're trying to keep that audience, but also have an impact on them. Yeah. That was one of the things that struck me after the the game I'd brought Jasmine to last year, um, was that I think it was a close game. I think Essex had won by like three or four points, and watching you and Chloe and um, uh, Maddie, I think it was at the time, like just still having such a smile on your face and coming up to the girls, come, but there was even some boys there. They come up to the fans afterwards and hi, thanks for coming and how are you, like. I, I don't know if I would have the mental toughness after losing a game to then 
have the energy to then go and be positive. And so like absolute credit to you and the girls for, for doing that. And I think, I mean, it's, it's, I can only speak on, on, on my behalf as a parent, like the impact that you had, you and Chloe had on Jasmine, like she's changed in the last 12 months, I think, because she's seen you guys be more physical, be more um, visible um when she didn't think that women were allowed to be that in in no. this sort of arena um so it, she now like whenever your name comes up in conversation or whether we're talking about basketball or whatever she's always like dead keen to get involved and dead keen to, to talk about it when before she didn't because she thought it was just a man's thing so it's just a case of replicating that a couple of thousand times over and then we can fill that arena and mm -hmm. everyone's happy. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. And I think it's also appreciating for us on the woman's side, like you said, we don't get to like half a full arena. Uh, we only have a couple hundred uh, people coming. And for us, that means a lot because I truly think that we have the best crowd in, in the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, consistently. And we've had really tough games and people still decide to come in and show up and, and cheer on us. So it's just being grateful for those supporters who are loyal to us. And and we've had bad games. Um, yeah. And after the game, I still had people saying, oh, yeah, like the outcome wasn't great. I know that you're not happy with, with the loss. And yeah. I'm usually quite like easy to read. So you can tell that I'm fuming or really upset about yeah, it. Yeah. But but then they go, but your effort and yeah, your fight yeah. was unmatched. And and yeah. I love the fact that people are able to appreciate that, that you see that we have a short bench or we've had in the, a short bench in the past. Yeah. And we've had six people, five people even. And then people go, yeah, I know that the outcome wasn't great, but man, it was a great game to watch. And you diving on the floor and you giving everything you had, like spot on. And yeah. then you go, it's appreciated. Like you yeah. see that people notice the effort rather than just the scoreboard. And yeah. that's what really matters. Like that's what as an athlete, sometimes that gets you going. And sometimes last year was really tough. Yeah. But then we had home games and you're just ready to go because you know that you have fans coming and you know that they're going to have your back and you just want to give back. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I've noticed, especially with, with basketball versus football that I've sort of grown up um watching over the years is that at the end of the game if it, certainly in football if you lose the fans just turn on you and it's mm -hmm. booing and effing and jeffing and you know whether it's in basketball whether it's the the, the men's or the women's game that, it, that is exactly spot on what you've seen. even when even in in the in, when you're sitting in the crowd and you're not even speaking to the players are miles away from them you still hear people sitting next to you going Oh well, you know they tried. They give it their best. You know they were they were a good team, and you know there's there's a sense of like common sense. Mm -hmm. Like people look at it and go, yes, they did give their all. Or I've never once heard anyone at an Eagles game turn on either side, either team. Um, and obviously, I'm assuming that sort of translates through to you and you. You know that must be reassuring for you to know that the, the fans are on your side they're not going to turn against you they're not going to give you grief every you know every time you lose um what's your sort of your hopes for the team this season like what are you um because obviously there's been a lot of changes this season with roster uh, changes and whatnot are you feeling that things are starting to come together now yeah definitely i think um we had a difficult start just because we still had pieces missing. We had injuries going on. Chloe was out. Katie was out. So I think we had a weird timing between having new players coming in mm. and players getting hurt. So it took us a really long time to have a full roster, a full squad to actually start learning to play together. Yeah. And we've always had a core group from the beginning but with injuries and then new additions who have a good role, an important role, uh, that just takes time. So uh, I think that now that we have everyone, um, I think we're definitely starting to like see um, how this can carry on and how we can get better and how we can have an impact in the league and, and be competitive. So 
Um, for us right now, it's just one game at a time until Christmas. Um, and our goal is to go undefeated until Christmas um, because we think that if we do what we need to do and follow our game plan and focus on us, Obviously, we need to have in mind who we're playing against and our scouting reports are going to look different based on the opponents. But if we focus on us and we take care of our business, um, we believe that we should go undefeated until Christmas time. And then we have a break and then we reset and then we will approach the second half of the season. But until then, now we have three important games to to tackle first and hopefully we just get good wins. Is that all that's left till Christmas? Three games? Yeah, because it's no November has this weird uh mm. break with FIBA windows and then uh we have the Christmas break, but then since Gloucester dropped out of the league, uh we don't have that last game right before the winter uh break. Yeah. And are you going back home Christmas or are you staying in Newcastle? Yeah, I'm going back to Spain for a couple of weeks before coming back for for the second half of the season. So I'll be home for two weeks and uh just enjoy some family time, seeing my friends, enjoy my Spanish food, better weather, um, and all yes. of that before coming back. Like I love Newcastle, but I know for a fact I've never been to Barcelona and I know there's better weather in Barcelona. <laughs> um what what does Christmas usually look like for you guys in Spain? Is it different to what it is over here or is it quite similar? Uh, I think I would I, th- I would say it's quite similar to be honest. We don't have we don't have Boxing Day like no, you guys right. do. We just um, for us I think it's just getting with our families and friends to be honest. Like it's just quality time and even and food that too. Uh, yeah. Eating and and quality time with our friends and family, especially because that's the time when like most people have some sort of days off. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a good time to catch up spend time with your family and friends, eat some good food. Um, so it will be a quick break. It's two weeks, but that's, I think that's enough time for me to settle at home for a little bit, see everyone, and then have a quick reset and disconnect for a little bit before coming back. Marina, listen, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I know you're very, very busy. Um, but yeah, if if people want to connect with you on social media, where's the best place to to send them? Where's the best place to do that? Uh, probably Twitter or Instagram, just like when you reached out uh, and I retweeted uh, one of your videos that I thought it was great when you were talking about um, our uh, league, um, especially because it had to do with our game and, and the social media and stuff. So uh, Twitter or Instagram would probably be the best platform to like reach out to. Amazing. And I'm still quite bad at replying sometimes. Like I, get I hadn't going noticed. I you... hadn't noticed at all. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> I felt so bad. Then I went, "Oh, it's been weeks," and I just never got back to him. Um, great. So I was just like, "I need to. I need to get this done because he's been waiting." <laughs> uh, you've listen. You've got more than uh, enough on your plate at the minute, so uh, I do appreciate the time. Yeah, no problem. And I hope you have a good day, and I hope to see you soon around. Are you, uh, are you at the uh, Patriots game tonight? Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably see you there then. Perfect. Well, hopefully we get a win, but hopefully. I'll see you around and hopefully I can see you in person and have a little chat. Yeah, just look out for the uh, the homeless Mario. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Marina. Perfect. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Cheers. Backlash written on me, card rubbing on a glass bowl. I've been balling. Free my ladies in the counter now. I'm already out. Already on the countdown. I'm going to set it right. Got the backlash written on me, cold running from the popo, and it's on me.